put our hands together and give God some praise in the place. Hallelujah. 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 This may very well be a hallelujah anyhow uh, type of service today. We bless the name of the Lord. We give honor to him today because he is worthy of all of our honor and praise, our adoration. Uh, we thank God for another day's journey. Am I the only one glad that he woke me up this morning and started me on uh, my way? Praise God for uh, this time of worship. We are preparing our hearts and minds for uh, a worship experience, uh, and I believe it's going to be an experience. You know, some people go to church, but then you, then there are those who have an experience uh, because they have entered into the presence of the Lord. Uh, I need an experience today. I don't know about you, but I got some stuff on my plate. I've got some some things on my uh, menu, and and they don't look like they want to move on their own. So somebody gonna have to pray with me. Somebody gonna have to help me praise my way through this thing. Do I have a witness here today? Oh, I'm not the only one with problems. I understand that. We all come here with our stuff. We all come here with worries and concerns and issues that we will have to face when we leave this place. But in the meantime, that's what Jesus told, told the boys as he ascended into heaven. Uh, he, he ascended him, and as he was going, he said, in the meantime, until I come back, y'all got some stuff to do. Amen, amen. Thank God for those of you who are here, uh, and we are worshiping today. Who's, our, who's singing for us? The men, who's singing? Praise team, oh, y'all come on. Don't let me steal your thunder. We are ready. Uh, y'all, let's let's all stand and and help the praise team uh, as they as they bring us into this time Amen. of worship. Amen. Praise God. Praise God.
his name well you have to lift up your hands how do you bless his name you got to open your mouth how, how do you bless his name you got to call it out and let a dying world know that the God we serve is alive and and moving in our lives oh we praise God this morning uh, we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior he is our redeemer and sustainer. We greet you in his marvelous name. I am Pastor Vincent Oliver, and I come to welcome those of you who have arrived here in person for worship, and then for those who are viewing with us on Facebook Live. I appreciate your support and your participation in this time of worship. There's worship going on all over the world, all over this country, but this is special because we are connecting with God for ourselves. Am I right about it this morning? Amen. So we thank God for that. And for those of you who are viewing us on Facebook, on our NCBC Pastor Vincent Oliver page, I appreciate your support. Would you comment and let us know you're on board? Uh, would you uh, hit those share buttons and let us know uh, that you are sharing the word of God this time of worship? Those of you who are present and in person here today, you can also help us and share this thing by taking a selfie or just going on your Facebook page and said, I'm in church and I'm worshiping at New Calvary Baptist Church. Once you say that, once you post it, share it a couple of times and guess what? The word will be out and things will get stronger. We appreciate what God is doing with us how he's allowing us to use the technology that he has made available. One day I'm going to get the hang of it. Praise God. Praise God. So we thank God for this time of worship. Praise team, y'all are doing it this morning. I appreciate y'all. Amen. I appreciate you so much. We're going to ask you to sing in a moment, but first we want to have a scripture and prayer this morning. I'm going to ask if one of our ministers, if Minister Cornegay, if you would, the birthday girl, if you would uh, prepare a scripture, and then I'm going to ask if Minister Lawrence Waddell, if you would prepare your heart uh, to lead us in a word of prayer in that order. Following our scripture and our prayer, uh, the praise team is going to come back and bless us. I know that might be an extra one that y'all hadn't prepared for, but but I, I, got, I got that kind of praise team. Amen. Amen. So scripture and then prayer. Shall we all stand for the word? Back in the book of Psalms this morning, Psalm 34, Psalms 34, starting at the first verse. We have it, and it reads as thus, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. 
My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man whose trust in him. Thus is the reading of the Lord's word, and it is truly blessed. Let us pray. He walks with me and talks with me and tells me I am his own. He walks with me and talks with me and tells me I am his own. And the joy woo, that we share as we tarry there, no other has ever known. Gracious and eternal Father, Blessed Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, we humble ourselves before you, asking you to come into this holy place and fill our wretched hearts. Father God, in the name of Jesus, no other name for us to call but Jesus, we put our petition before you this morning, thanking you for this another day, thanking you for one more holy experience, thanking you for one more touch of your holy hand, thanking you for moving this mountain and lifting this valley and making a way out of no way one more time for us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for just being God, someone we can call on in the morning, someone we can call on in the noonday, and someone we can call on in the midnight hour. Jesus, oh Jesus, we thank you right now for your grace and your mercy. Father God, as we move through this service, we ask that you touch those that are in this holy place. Touch those that are viewing from home and abroad. Just move on us today, oh Lord. Have your way in us today, oh Lord. Move on us today. And Father God, as the songs of Zion go forth, oh, won't you be with us? And as the word of God, your holy word, comes out from our pastor, oh, open our hearts, open our minds to receive, and give a special anointing to the top of his head, to the bottom of his feet, and fill his heart with your glory. Because we need a word. Oh, Father, we need a word. The, the devil is busy this morning. And we need a word to move forward. So hear us and guide us. Lead us, provide. In your holy name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to say... I just want to say Hallelujah Hallelujah Hey, hey. 
made a way out of no way. Hey!
Hallelujah. More and more. More and more. Hallelujah. More and more. More and more. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. More and more. 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 Chasing after you. Just hit me right there. Have, have you ever chased after something or someone? I mean, it you you were emotional. I don't know whether you were happy or whether you was mad, but when you chase, yes, when sir. you show sure enough, that's my daddy's word. Yes, sir. When you show sure enough chase after, you don't care where you have to go. How long you have to go? You never seem to get tired. And the song said more and more. When you chase, you, you forget about what's, what's on your mind. You got your, there's something in front of you. You're after it. You're laser focused. You're on a mission. Thank you, praise team, for, for reminding us we're chasers after the Lord. We, with reckless abandonment, we don't care where. I know I broke my toe one time chasing my brother. He had hit me, and I was going to get him back. And I chased him and ran after something, and it my, hit my toe, and my toe was going this way, and my foot was going that way. And I said... I got to leave this alone because I was focused. And I thank God for the revelation of how that song really ministers to us. And then I'm going to put this one in, in there in your spirit as well. Uh, in that psalm that, that Minister Cornegay read, she, she, she ignited a question in my spirit. I'll, add, I'll, I'll spend my vacation researching it but because I, I, I don't have the answer to this morning, but in, in verse 3 of Psalm um, 34, no, verse 2, he says, my soul shall make a boast. Notice now, this is David writing. Da David said, my soul shall make her boast. David said, my soul shall make her boast. I, I, I've got I've to research that to see what the gender confusion I'm feeling with that is about. I know he, he was very conscious and, 
and he was very specific when he said that. He said, my soul, my, I'm a man, my soul shall make her boast after the Lord. I got to fit. When I, when I get it, I'll, I'll share it. I'll, I'll share it, but, but it's sort of, Bishop, you may know already. <laughs> you, you, fresh, you fresh off an anointed experience. You, you may have a revelation for us. <laughs> Praise God. Thank God for another opportunity to stand before you on this fifth Sunday uh, to um, greet you in the name of Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. Thank God for those of you who are here in person. And once again, I'm greeting our Facebook congregation. I appreciate all of you for uh, what you do to support us. Uh, New Calvary is a ministry uh, that moves by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And by the word of God. That's, that's how we roll, as they say. Amen. So in your giving, you have been very generous and very supportive of the ministry and the work that we do here. So I appreciate that. I encourage you to continue to give. You see on your program, you see on the screen, I pray that there are several ways you can sow a seed into this ministry through Give Lify or Cash App. You can write a check. You can bring it by, drop it off. Or if you're here after the service, you can uh, go to the rear of the church where the trustees have baskets to receive your tithes as well as your offerings. Uh, we'll pray for our offerings in a moment, but let me just move forward with some of the things that I want to make sure that we are aware of. You see that, that there is no Bible study in the month of August. Amen. Rest, recover. Uh, amen. Take a break. Uh, clear your mind. Do some some other kinds of Bible reading and studying on your own. And then we will resume our Bible study uh, in September, the first Wednesday uh, in September. Amen. There will be no Sunday school in the month of August. Rest, recover, sleep in a little bit. Amen. We'll be in church. Now, I didn't say there won't be church. Amen. But we, we're going to take a break uh, and give our faithful teachers and and those who support these ministries an opportunity uh, to rest and recover. Amen. Amen. I don't know whether y'all happy or sad about that, uh, but that's just how it is right now. Whatever you'd like to find out about what we're doing, you can go to our website, uh, www.newcalvarydde.org, and you can find out what's going on and get... Um, um, back issues and, and uh, sermons and lessons of what has occurred uh, this month. Uh, thank God for all of our uh, members who, in, who celebrated birthdays in the month of July. I am grateful for God answering prayer. Do you know that God answers prayer? Yes, do, do I have a witness that God answers prayer? You, you can hear somebody else talk about how he answered their prayer, but that don't mean nothing until he answers That's right. your prayer. Yeah. Amen. And, and then when you see sitting and standing before you and in your family and in your life, uh, the results of prayer. Amen. We're looking at Sister Victoria. She is, she is the result of collective and corporate prayer. Amen. And she is with us. Just thank you. Thank you for coming, and I know just what you meant when you showed up here. I know, I know what, that, what you were saying. You want to be a testimony that God is a healer. Amen. You don't have to say a word. Y'all know, know she can sing, right? And them little soldiers next to her can sing, too. Praise God. But thank God for their presence here today. I just appreciate the fact that God is faithful. Yes. Amen. He, he is so faithful. Now, New Calvary, there's a couple of things that I need to make sure that you are aware of. Um, one is on this coming Sunday, the first Sunday, uh, we will welcome all of the Pressy family. 
Does that include Matthews? Too? Did Matthews? Are they part of that? They it, okay, there's a whole bunch. Of, there's a whole bunch of them. They, they, they got branches going, but they will be celebrating their family reunion that weekend, and they have asked if they can come and worship with us as a family on next first Sunday. I think that's that's just uh, a, an honor. Uh, for people who are coming from different parts of the country to come here and be with us in worship. So that's on next Sunday. So I want everybody to behave. <laughs> we will be in our first Sunday attire. Amen. Even though we relax during the months of July and August, we, we, we don't relax that much. Amen. Because we, we know protocol and church order uh, and, and Holy Communion is important. Amen. Now, the other thing I need you to be aware of, uh, and we haven't done this for several years, on this coming Friday, I believe that's August 5th, is it not? Yes. Thank you all. I got calendars all over the place. Uh, August 5th, that's a Friday. Um, Apostle uh, A.J. Harding, he's a young pastor uh, in the city of Wilmington. He's a son of our own friend. Uh, Apostle uh, and Bishop John Graham. Uh, Apostle Harding has asked if we would come and minister at his revival uh, for his pastoral anniversary. That's on a Friday evening at 7 o'clock uh, at um, the um, Temple United Church. I believe that's 602 Washington Street, 6 and Washington Streets. I am asking, I've already made the appeal to uh, both the praise team and the mail chorus, uh, and I'm making the appeal also to our uh, officers and members, if you would join me there so that we can support that service. Come uh, prepared to, to give a, a, an offering and also to be a part of a great time of fellowship. This is a young uh, preacher that I have taken uh, two, I don't do that with a lot, but but uh, he's one of the few that I, I heard him preach, and he brought me to tears uh, with how real uh, his preaching and his gospel was. So if he's leaning and asking me to do something, I need to reciprocate. I can't do that by myself. I'm, I'm on vacation, but I think it's that important. So New Calvary, would you all not disappoint me? I'm looking for you. To come, those of you who are on Facebook watching, y'all, I'm looking for you as well uh, to come and to be a part of that service on this coming Friday. Would you please put that on your calendar? It's a seven o'clock uh, service uh, at uh, Temple United, 602 Washington Street. Amen. We're gonna have a great time. Amen. Amen. We we haven't done this for a while, so we need to go and get our feet wet again and see how that works out and what the Lord has to say for us. Amen. Yeah. I think I've covered everything that I want to cover. Um, can you get your offerings in your hands? Uh, and, and we can pray about what God is about to do with your gifts. Amen. You know, and as you pray about him giving, you know, you're also putting a blessing on your own finances. Because you praying for the 10% you're about to give or whatever amount you're about to give. But guess what? God want to bless the remainder. He want to bless what's left on your account. We want to bless what's left in your uh, purse. Some of y'all have pocketbooks, but amen. He want to bless what's left in your pocket. So I want to pray. I want to pray. Father. Uh, those of us who have our gifts and our hands, if we give by devices, uh, whatever the means of giving is, we seek your blessings. Uh, we, we ask now, Lord, that you would uh, take these gifts and use them as you see fit. Uh, our ideas may not line up with your will and your purpose, so we put this matter into your able hands. But, Lord, my intercession is on behalf of the givers, the sowers, the stewards. Would you reward them for their faithfulness? Some are given out of obedience. 
Others are given out of an excitement and a love for sharing in the work of kingdom building. Honor their gifts. Bless that which remains. And we shall, Lord, declare your name high and holy. And it is in the marvelous, matchless, miracle-working name of our Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Let us all say amen. amen. And amen again. Amen. Oh, come on, let's give God some praise with our hands. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right, there's one more assignment I have. I normally, uh, I would not have been here this morning. Amen. I'd have messed around and given myself two additional assignments on my vacation. But I, So I thought I'd take this morning and, and, and let somebody help me with the preaching load. And that person is Reverend Dr. Steve Wright. Amen. <laughs> he's going to come and he's going to bless us uh, as the Lord has equipped and inspired him to do so. Would you give him your full attention and and plenty of amens. If you can't say amen, just wave your hand or nod your head. Is that all right? Yes. Praise team, y'all been blessing us all day, so you may as well give us one more to get us ready. God bless you. Oh, y'all out. Y'all out of them, huh? Y'all sc scrape up a song. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Reverend gave us a, an assignment. So we hope that we can bless you. This is a song we haven't rehearsed in a while. But we pray that the Lord will send down his blessings. That you will get a blessing from it. And that the Lord will be pleased. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a very simple song. And it goes, he knows my name. Does the Lord know your name? Does he know your name? Very simple song. Hallelujah. You know my name. Pour out 
my heart to you. Here in his presence, I am made new. I'm going to sing it one more time. Ah. Hey, So now I pour out my heart to you. Can you help me with that? Oh, here we go. So now. So now I pour out my heart to you. Oh, here in your presence. Here in your presence I've been made to. Oh, let's sing it together, everybody. So now, hey. So now, I pour out my heart to you. Hey, here now in my presence. Here now, in your presence, I am made you. And then we just simply go. You know my name. more time, everybody together. You know my name. Oh, you know my name. Oh, God. You know my name. You know my name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to know that he knows your name. It's good to know that he calls me friend. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we, we bow before you one more time this morning. And we thank you and we praise you. We lift up you and magnify your name. You are so worthy to be praised. And now we pray, oh God, that you would... Speak a word to this waiting congregation for such a time as this. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord and my Redeemer. And those that love the Lord said amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Help me and say the devil is a liar. Is a liar. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with my throat. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. We give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. Amen. Give reverence to our Bishop, Bishop Reverend Dr. Vincent P. Oliver. Amen. Give reverence to Sister Oliver. God bless you for being here. To all of you, our deacons, officers, members, and friends, those that are watching at home on Facebook, and those that are here in person, it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. It's been a week for me. Hallelujah. But God is able. He's in the healing business. And, and, and we're just going to trust him and keep on moving. Amen. There is a word this morning, though. And it comes from uh, the book of Luke. Luke chapter 10, uh, verses 25 through 37. Uh, and if you would, rest on your feet as we... Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. When you have it, say amen. amen. And it reads, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up, and he tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to, in, to, to, to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? 
And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. But he willingly to justify himself said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered, saying, A certain man went down to Jericho, uh, from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and he bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast. And he brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave to them the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do likewise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I want to lift for you here in that 29th verse. But he willing to justify of himself said unto Jesus, who is my neighbor? In our reading this morning, uh, our lesson text, we find that Jesus has instructed his disciples, telling them how blessed they were for being allowed to see and to hear things that many prophets and kings had desires to hear and to see. But he had chosen them. And right after he reminds them of how blessed they are, the text says the certain lawyer stood up and he tempted them, asking, what must I do to inherit the eternal life? Y'all work with me here. And Jesus, being the all-knowing and the all-wise master, that he is, turns the question around and he says, in effect, what is written in the law? What does the Bible say? Mr. Lawyer, Mr. Old Testament scholar, what does the word say? And the lawyer answers his own question. You see, he knows Old Testament scripture, Deuteronomy 6 and 5. He says, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as myself. Jesus said unto him, thou hast answered right. Do this and thou shalt live. But the signifying lawyer, that's a, a word my father used to use. The signifying lawyer wasn't finished. He was still trying to get the best of the man of God. And he says in 29, verse 29, who is my neighbor? And saints, I tell you today, that question both then and now provokes debate and an uneasiness. In Jesus' time, the religious folk often debated the limits of neighborliness. The Pharisees, the rabbis, and even the common folk, they drew the lines at different places. So today the question is more difficult than ever before than in biblical times. Do you know in the King James Bible, he mentions neighbor 157 times? Modern mobility makes people see for only a fleeting moment our neighbors. We walk by them at the mall. We sit next to them on airplanes. We crowd in with them in elevators. And the media makes the question even more difficult. I even have an app on my phone. And guess what it's called? neighborhood hallelujah we can hit a remote button and become instantly aware of what's going on across town and even across the continental divide there seems to be no boundary to defining our global neighbors and yet folks still don't know the people that live right in their own neighborhood sometimes even right next door there's a guy that lives across the street from me sister right now we moved about nine months ago to middletown and we live on a circle. And there's this one guy, I think he's rich, because he wasn't there in the winter. He was down in Florida somewhere. But he's back now, and he looks at me, and he looks at my wife and my dog, and he looks at us as though we 
don't belong there. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, everybody else do a meet and greet. They come knock on the door. They come bring you a little cookie, a little cake, a little something. But this guy, and I'm determined to win him over, right? He, he, he just kind of looks like he ain't really feeling us. Somebody say amen. amen. I, I can remember a time when everyone knew their neighbors and respected them. There used to be a time when you were away, the neighbor looked after your house. He even had a key. Now it's the neighbor that is most likely to rip you off. There used to be a time when you ran short. You went to the neighbor to borrow a cup of sugar or a cup of flour. Somebody say amen. amen. There, there, there used to be a time if you went to the store, you checked to see if your neighbor needed something. Hallelujah. If you cut your grass or shoveled your snow, you took care of your neighbor. If you had excess food, you took it to your neighbor. And if you knew your neighbor was sick, you took them a plate of food. Somebody say amen. amen. The lawyer in our text, he has a motive for asking the question, which makes it more important than the answer. His motive was that he wanted to justify himself. He, he, he wanted to limit his responsibility rather than define his responsibility. He was more interested in theological speculation than practical application. Somebody work with me here. In other words, he didn't want to do nothing for nobody but himself. But he wanted to inherit the kingdom. Somebody said, everybody want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to die. I'm starting to feel pretty good here. He wanted to go to heaven, but he didn't want to help no one else get there. And so on this fifth Sunday of July, Holy Spirit has led me to this text. And I want to use for a subject the neighborly thing to do. Y'all going to work with me. In our text, Jesus, Jesus uses a story to emphasize his point uh, to the righteous lawyer. The story says that a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Notice, the man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jerusalem is the church. Jericho is the neighborhood, and whenever you are at church, you ought to be up. Somebody say amen. You ought to be up in attitude, up in disposition. Church is no place for a down spirit. If it's down, you need to leave it at home because you can't lift up the name of Jesus if you're feeling down. Somebody say amen. That's why we have the praise team giving him some praise. That's how we have the praise team ushering in the praises of the Lord so that we can lift him up. Hallelujah. So that when we leave the church, we can go down. Oh, help me. I'm feeling this thing. We can go down to Jericho. Hallelujah. And do what the Lord would have us to do. And so the man went down to Jericho. He traveled on a road being notorious for robbers and thieves. And he fell among thieves which stripped him and robbed him and wounded him and left him for dead. And there were three people that came by the way of this man. Just like there's three types of people that come to church. Not, not here at New Calvary, by the way, but, 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 but in some churches. Can I tell you who they are? That they are those that are not concerned. They are those that are curious, and they are those that have compassion. The text says that by chance a certain priest came by. A preacher, if you will. The text doesn't say it, but implies this preacher was so preoccupied with his church, with his ministry, his members, and his mission, that when he saw what was going on, he was so unconcerned that he passed by on the other side. And saints, we can get so busy with church work that we miss the work of the church. Somebody say amen. amen. The text says there was a Levite, and Levites were responsible for the temple worship. They prepared the sacrifices, the altar. They were like our modern-day deacons and deaconesses and trustees. And he says that when he was at the place, he came and he looked. He was curious. But he, too, passed by on the other side. There are a lot of folk that come to church that are curious. They want to know what the church is going to do. What's the pastor's vision? What's his plan for the church? How, how are you going to grow the church? They come to look at what's going on, and they leave the rest of us to do the work. Somebody say amen. amen. 
but they don't want to do nothing to help the plan. They're just curious. Two religious professionals, if you will. Uh, Jericho was the home to thousands of priests and Levites. Two professionals walked by their wounded neighbor. One was not concerned. The other was just curious. Religious bodies, busy bodies. And if we're not careful, we will allow formalism, traditionalism, ritualism, and institutionalism, and churchism to cause us to miss our neighbors who are hurting right in our midst. And then there was a certain Samaritan. He was despised. He was a half-breed. The Samaritans were despised by the Jews, for the Samaritans had desecrated the temple by spreading dead men's bones throughout the temple. So the Jews hated the Samaritans. In fact, they were taught to suffer rather than receive help from a Samaritan. So then what did this Samaritan do to earn him a title of the Good Samaritan? And I'm so glad y'all asked him because he had compassion. Rather than being not concerned, rather than being curious, he had compassion. And so I want to use the rest of my time that I have left defining the characteristics of this good Samaritan. Y'all going to pray with me. First of all, the text says he stopped. He stopped. When he saw the man, he stopped what he was doing. I'm quite sure he had an agenda. He had a life. He had his own priorities. But when he saw that his neighbor needed help, he stopped. And how many know that trouble don't always come at the right time. In fact, trouble comes most of the time at the wrong time. Hallelujah. How, how many know? How, but, 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 but trouble is never convenient, and it often costs something, and it comes at critical times. Our late brother, Ernest Presley, he would sing a song, I'm so glad trouble don't last always. But when trouble comes, we have to stop, and we have to see about somebody when trouble comes. And how many know people don't, don't, don't plan on trouble coming? Trouble comes, you know, in the midnight hour for the most part. It may be noon, daytime, but in our lives, it's the midnight hour when trouble will come. Somebody say amen. He stopped to see about his neighbor, but not only did he stop, he stooped. He came down from his lofty place. He got off his beast, his horse, and he stooped down to see about this man. He had compassion on him. He put himself in somebody else's place. Somebody said, but by the grace of God, there go I. Somebody say amen. Not only did he stop, not only did he stoop, but he sacrificed his time. The text says he went to the man and he bound his wounds. He poured oil and wine over his wounds. He set the man on a beast and he brought him to an end to take care of him. Watch this. He stopped. He stooped. He sacrificed. But he also spent his money to make sure that his neighbor's needs were being met. The man was broke. They had robbed him of his money. And this good Samaritan spent his money to see about his neighbor. Lastly, as I work on your patience here, he stayed with his neighbor. The text says on the morrow, the next day, he departed. He stayed with him all night to make sure he was okay. He changed his plans to see about this man, and he departed on the morrow, but, but not before he spent some more of his money. In fact, he told the innkeeper that whatever he needs, he would take care of it when he returns. Saints of God, Jesus has called you and I. He's called you and me to look after our neighbors. He says, love our neighbors as we love ourselves, Matthew 19, 19. And I discovered that the reason why some of us can't love our neighbors is because we don't love ourselves. Yeah, we love the Lord, but we don't love ourselves. We don't understand that our bodies are the temple of God. And if we did, we wouldn't do some of the things that we do. It's about to get tight, but I know it's right. We wouldn't put tattoos all over God's temple. That's desecrating the temple. First Corinthians 6.19 says, Know you not 
that your Bible is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which I in you, I know it's tight, but it's right. If we really loved ourselves, if we loved ourselves, <coughs> excuse me, we wouldn't eat some of the stuff that we eat. Say amen. That will ultimately lead to an early demise. High blood pressure and heart attack are leading killers of black folk. And, and in particular, church folk. Fried chicken and Philly cheese steaks and French fries and pizza. Bad diet. No exercise. And we want God to give us good health and prosperity. We don't love ourselves. And we need to come to the realization that we're fearfully and wonderfully made, as the psalmist says. And God loves you and I so much. I'm starting to feel my help here. Hallelujah. He, he loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son to die for us. That's how much God loves us. Can I get an amen? When we learn to love ourselves as our neighbor, we can love our neighbor. And then only then can we do the neighborly thing. We can go and see about our neighbor. We can go down from the church house, and we can go to Jericho. And Jericho might be in your own household. Jericho might be in your neighborhood. Jericho may be on your job. Jericho is where you'll find folk that have been robbed of life, beaten by Satan, wounded by the world, and living half dead. Can I get a witness? Jericho is where folk have no money, no food, no job, no joy, no peace, no hope, and no Jesus. And the Lord has told you and I, and he's told me to go, to go to Jericho and to do what the Samaritan did. And saints of God, you may not have a whole lot, but what you do have, you ought to share it with your neighbor. And while you're sharing your sustenance, the stuff that God has blessed you with, don't forget and don't fail and don't forego sharing the Savior. Tell men and women that have been stripped of dignity, robbed of their hopes and dreams, and beaten by the devil and left for dead, tell them that Jesus is the way. He is the truth and the life. Tell them that he can restore all that the enemy has taken from them. He can, he can give you a robe of righteousness. And he, he can heal your wounds. And he can renew your mind. And he can transform your life. And he has promised all who believe on his name eternal life. But I need you to do our part. We, we need to go do the neighborly thing. We need to go do what the Samaritan did. That is what the church does. That's why we study the word on Wednesday night by Facebook, say amen. amen. That's why we practice the songs of Zion on Thursday night, praise team. Uh -huh. That's why we study some more on Sunday school on Zoom Sunday morning. Uh -huh. That's why we meet and worship on Sunday morning in person and online. Right. So we can do what's right on Monday. Somebody say amen. amen. Is there anybody here today? Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that, that's ready to do what Jesus said do. He said, go and see about somebody less fortunate than yourself. Yes, we have problems, and yes, we have issues, but I've learned that when I'm caught up seeing about somebody else, watch this, church, my problems don't seem so overwhelming anymore. But I've learned when I'm caught up seeing about somebody, hallelujah, God sees about me. He supplies all of my needs according to my riches and glory. He blesses me abundantly above all I could ever ask or think. He opens up windows and pours out blessings all because I'm doing what he wants me to do. So I don't know about you, but he spoke in my spirit. I've been having a pity party all week. Everything's been going wrong. Health bad. My pet's on a deathbed. All those things are happening. But I was trying to have a pity party, and then God said, get up, Steve. Get up and go preach your word. Go tell them about Jesus. Go do what I've instructed you to do. Go do what I've called you to do. Go do what I've equipped you to do. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to do the neighborly thing. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to do the neighborly thing and see about somebody less fortunate than myself. 
Hallelujah. God bless you. Praise the Lord. You know, he really does see about us when we see about somebody else. I'm going to tell you a story. I, uh, I have a red pillow, big old fluffy pillow that sits on the living room floor, and it just sits there. And the other day when all hell was breaking out in our house, I took the pillow, took it upstairs, and I told my wife, I said, God is the only one that can fix this. I got down on the pillow, and I poured it out. I mean, I poured it out like I had two, three years worth of tears in me. And I had to talk with the Lord. And he changed me. All those things I was worrying about started to come into fruition. Poor little dog started walking, started eating, started going to the bathroom. You know, he's still twisted. Uh, we got an appointment today at a surgeon. And hopefully we can fix that. And so when you, you know, and, so, and money, oh, my God, money, you, just to see a surgeon for a dog, you, you know, the answer really is, well, I, but God said, look, I'll replace that. You just do the right thing. You do what I called you to do. And I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this, that when we talk to God, however it goes, it's all good. It's all good. When we do what God called us to do, it's all good. And even though people may not be keeping school, I, I believe that somebody said that every tear we dry, every tear, God sees it and he stores it up in heaven. So keep on doing the neighborly thing. Start in our own household, in our families. That's the neighborly thing. That's what God would have us to do. And watch. Watch and see how he works. Watch and see how he blesses us. God, God bless. Praise the Lord. Let us stand. We praise God that a word has been said that rekindles what we already know for the most part. But if you're here today and you've not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in person and those that are watching by Facebook, God would have you to know that he's in the saving business. And he can take our brokenness he can take our homelessness, if that's where we find ourselves, our lack of resources, and he can do wonderful things with it. But he wants you to come to him. He wants him, you to come to him and say yes. Yes, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Yes, Lord, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Thank you, Lord, for salvation. He wants us to come humbly before him. And I guarantee you, if you do that and you're sincere about it, God will, will do miraculous things in your life. He'll turn it around. Hallelujah. He'll turn it around. So if you're here today, come. Come. If you're at home watching on Facebook, kneel where you are and ask the Lord to come into your life. Ask the Lord to heal you. Ask the Lord to change you. Ask the Lord to save you. And he will. That's a good song. Yes, Lord, yes. Trust you and obey. Yeah. And my answer will be Lord yes I 
Give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. Now, when you leave here today, the Lord going to send you somebody right there on 13 or wherever you stop at the light. They'll be there. You got to search your hearts and search your minds and do the right thing. There's a guy down in Middletown. I've been watching him for a week. He's got tattoos from here to his entire body. And he never wears a shirt because it's summertime. And I passed him by a couple of times. I pray that I see him today because I'm going to stop and talk to him because he looks like he doesn't like himself. You know, he looks like he's just mad at, at life and mad at the world. And so if God gives me another opportunity to witness to him, I intend to do that. Now, I will tell you, a week ago, I didn't think like that. I mean, I saw him, but I didn't think that it's my, it's, this is for me to see. This is for me to do. This ain't for me to tell somebody else. This is for me to do. So I'm going to go out of my way to pull over, stop, do whatever I got to do to witness to this young man and see if I can offer him Jesus. Amen. Same thing's going to happen to you. You just don't know it yet. Reverend, you can say, that's what Reverend was talking about. There they go. Lance, pull over. <laughs> God bless you. Let us look to the Lord for dismissal. Father, we bless your name for the word today. We thank you for how you remind us of who we are and whose we are. And Lord God, we thank you for opportunities to leave this place today and do what thus saith the Lord. Do the neighborly thing. So we thank you. We praise you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord makes his face to shine upon thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And the peace of God that passeth all understanding, may his rest rule and abide him for now and forevermore. God says, Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Praise God. God bless you. Amen.